This is a case study based on creative problem solving when mixing in the box. I'm using a project that I worked on last year, which was a mix and master for a client. The final song on the EP was a minimal one, and the tracks that I had to work with were lead vocals, the ambient backing vocals, and acoustic guitar driven backing beat. The major problem that we had was that the lead vocal was recorded with too much gain, and there were pops everywhere within it. I recommended re-recording, but the client wasn't happy with the subsequent takes that he took and insisted on us using the original and it being a lo-fi kind of track. Uh, my issue was that the quality just wasn't really there on that vocal, um, and so I had a lot of work to do basically to iron that out. So this was the last song on the EP. Uh, we had some really good tracks from this and standout singles. And I did not want this last track to really bring the project down. So the first step was to use Isotopes RX-8. Uh, I tried to use a deplosive, which was looking at the entire spectrum of the sound and identifying exactly where the pops were and trying to remove those, but I was unable to remove those sounds completely. I then used rx 8 declick tool as well for good measure. But the fact that the song was so stripped back with just the vocals and the acoustic guitar basically meant that there was no hiding from the imperfections in the vocal recording. So I used the mood of the song to guide my creative decisions from this point on. If I couldn't get rid of the imperfections, then I had to use imperfections of my own to mask them. A client had mentioned uh, a lo-fi aesthetic and I immediately thought of vinyl records and the kind of uh, warm fuzz that you get uh, of a vinyl crackle. So I ran an auxiliary cable through my record player and recorded the vinyl crackle at the end of a the record. I then used this crackle as another track in the mix and cut the loot parts that were the least invasive against the, the vocal. The vinyl crackle layer was mixed in with the same reverb chain that the acoustic guitar was in and the backing vocals as well. So it was all in the same acoustic space. This meant that it didn't sound out of place and it didn't sound too invasive against the other components of the song. I could then adjust the volume of the vinyl crackle to the point where it just masked the remnant sounds of the pops in that lead vocal, enough to make you think that the artifacts were actually the vinyl crackle itself, and you wouldn't even have your ears drawn to the pops that were actually within, or still present within the vocal. Funnily enough, this song, which might have been the weakest, is actually firmly in the artist's top 10 tracks on Spotify.